what what exactly our prayer service was going to be and, and what tonight and the rest of the week was going to be like. And, and I said, you know what? I really don't know. I'm just kind of here. I believe God's going to be here. Yes. And I'm just going to see what God's going to do. Amen. I told somebody else, I said, you know, I don't know that I've done everything perfect, but this I do know. Prayed, yes. I fasted, yes. I've witnessed, and I'm just saying, okay, God, yeah. the ball's in your court now. Right. Do all that I can do. I, I, you know, I'd love to say that all of my life, and you could probably say the same thing, all of your life, we've probably not been the best witness. But I know for the last two weeks, yeah. I've been a witness, Amen. and I've found myself in prayer. So I, I want you to expect tonight, have the faith. Scripture says, if my people which are called by my name. You know, he never put a number on the people. He yes. just said, if my people. Yes. I don't know about you, but I believe that I'm a child of God. And I believe that tonight, if we will band together and we will join our faith, and we will join our prayers. Yes. I believe we will touch the throne of God for the city of North Carolina. Amen. Anybody else believe that tonight? Amen. Amen. Man. I believe God's going to do something tonight. I'm so happy to have my mentor. And I don't say that lightly. This is one of the few men that I've told they can veto anything I ever say. And uh, that hasn't happened yet, so I don't know exactly how I would react to that. I'm glad to have Brother Rich Price tonight. He pastors Grace Point Church in BB. And he's a very dear friend to me and my wife and his family. And I've asked him to come tonight and talk about uh, just prayer for our city, our responsibility for our city. And uh, we want him to come. Brother Price, we're so happy that you're here. We're all going to, amen, we're going to pray, aren't we? And we're going to get with him tonight. Amen. Praise God. Well, we clap our hands to the Lord. Just offer a praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you today, God. Thank you for who you are and thank you for what you're doing, Jesus. Do that just a moment. Praise the name of the Lord. 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 somebody else's church on a Wednesday night probably doesn't make a lot of sense and so I felt need to explain myself and I we're having a kids crusade in our church that happened to be tomorrow night and allowed us to move this service um, that we were having tonight tomorrow night so I asked Brother Kidder if I could be here tonight so it's good to be in the house of the Lord with each of you amen, amen. there's not any reason that I'm going to do this right now except for I feel for my own self, and, and, and even in our own church, that I'm not going to say every service, because sometimes I forget, but it's been something that we've asked our church in some moment of the service, in the very beginning, to do this. So if I say this, I'm not asking this church for anything other than just simply, I think that we need the Lord to cleanse us before we Amen. do anything. I mean, would it be all right if you just, it doesn't have to be anything loud. Just allow yourself just to repent before the Lord just for a moment. God, I pray right now, Jesus. We ask God, God you move over us right now, Jesus. God, I do repent of my sins, Lord. Anything in me that's not of you, God, I pray, Lord, you move over us today, God. You cleanse us today. Move in the sanctuary tonight, God. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. Speak to our hearts today, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. This is probably going to be a little bit different revival than you've ever been in before. I don't, I don't even have a message. I have thoughts. I have something that I felt in prayer. But I do pre appreciate the desire that I um, have already felt from Brother Kidder. I know there's two Brother Kidders here, but Brother Ron Kidder, as I've talked to him about 
at this revival that I appreciate the desire and purpose because this is a prayer revival. This is not a, a snot running preacher spitting across the front to a pews necessarily, even though the end result of this is probably to see a lot, a lot of people say, a lot of people come in, but that's not what this is about. This is, this is really an us, and I include myself right now in this church to say this is an us revival. Right. We're trying to get the Lord to move on this church, and these kind of revivals, I believe, can change the complexion of a church right. from now on. Not just the next few days, not just the next six months, but this kind of revival right here, I believe, it can be a moment that as we go six years from now or ten years from now or twenty years from now that we can say, you know what, I remember being in a prayer revival right. on a Wednesday night Hallelujah. when not everybody showed up, and I know exactly how it feels, yes. but yet in the midst of the effort, in the midst of the prayer, in the midst of everything that was going on, that we can say, God changed some things Amen. in the hearts of this church during that revival. And I pray for that to happen in this place. Revivals like these are not planned. You don't sit around a table in a planning session and think, you know what, we're going to have a prayer revival sometime around March. These kind of revivals are birthed. It's, they come out of a prayer room. They come out of saying, Lord, I, I need to know what needs to happen for our church. And, and I believe that's exactly what's happened through your pastor, that it was birthed out of prayer. For God to reveal to him what is needed for this church. And the answer simply is prayer. Amen. Just say that with me. Prayer. prayer. And I understand that you're on, a, on the tail end of a Daniel's fast. And even though you're able to eat. It's a fast, isn't it? Can you say amen? <laughs> amen. Even though you're able to eat. After a while. Dry lettuce and all that kind of stuff. If, if you're like me. You wish so bad that Daniel would have fasted on ice cream and bologna sandwiches. It would have been a whole lot easier have done that but fasting is not meant to be easy and you know that you've witnessed that but I don't believe praying is always easy I don't believe prayer revivals are always easy I don't believe that this whole process that we're going through and we've seen something happen as a result and I just just without trying to reflect upon what God's done in our church and I, when I walked in this building this evening everything kind of hit me in the face of what your pastor's going through, some things that I've gone through. God, show us what to do. Show us what we need. All those kind of things. And now we're finally seeing God move in a miraculous way. And it happened as a result as pr a prayer. We've seen uh, this last year, we had a few prayer re revivals ourselves. It wasn't planned. It was birthed out of prayer. Like this one. We, uh, we started having... We had two different months of prayer revivals. And then from that point on, we, were, we went into Sunday night. We didn't have service. We just asked our, our church. At, at that time, we weren't having a Sunday night service. So we asked our church. And our church is not a praying church. I mean, they are, they are a praying church. But when, it, but when it comes to a collective prayer room, it's not like it's the, an easy place to go to and just linger there for an hour. But something's clicked in the last year that when we, when we gather together around the church on a Sunday night, I asked everybody to come up close, and we began to pray. And for about an hour or so, we prayed together. And God moved, and we saw things happen. And this year, as a result of that prayer, this year alone, we had a youth service where we had a full packed out youth service. Some kids got on fire for God, and we saw right at nine people get the Holy Ghost in that youth service. And people ask, what happened? And I tell them, we didn't do anything. All we did, we, we, we've been praying. We, we had a van outside, and we, we had somebody that, that felt an urging towards the van, and so we got the van, but yet in the midst of getting the van, the person that felt the urging for the van didn't do anything at that moment with it. So here we had a van that was empty, but yet because of this one youth service, this one girl has, has been inviting her friends to school, uh, from school to church. She lives over 30 miles away. They bring a van load of kids every single service. Wednesday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, as a result of prayer. Amen? Amen. Last Sunday night, we were in service. And again, I'm, I'm saying this stuff. We're, we're not doing anything. We're not, we don't have the ability. It's, it's, this has not happened in the 11 years that I've been there. But as a result of prayer, we had a service last Sunday night where as we were having service, somebody came up 
at the end of service, and I need you to pray right now for my knee. It's hurting. I, I'm having severe pain. I, I prayed for her. Immediately, her knee got healed. Amen. Somebody else came up. God healed them, and four people in, the, in that service were healed. It's a result of prayer. Amen? Amen. 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 Wednesday, somebody drove through our drive through and I told the church after the fact, I said, I've been through drive throughs to get French fries. I've been through drive throughs to get Big Macs, but I've never been through a drive through to get prayer. But yet, they just said, they, they said, I couldn't make it to church because my daughter's in and she's not feeling well. She said, would you mind if I just brought her to the church drive through and you came out and prayed? We went out and prayed, and the report is that she was healed. Awesome. She went to the doctor, and God healed her. Oh, I said, what do you have God praise? Thank but what he's Jesus. doing is happening Thank through prayer. Lord, you're able. And so here's the thing. I know that fasting isn't easy. And I know prayer isn't easy. But the results are well worth the sacrifice. And you guys, as, as I look at where you're at right now, I was, I was thinking on this storyline. You're probably going to hear this verse a few times during this prayer revival. I know, I know as different men are coming, none of us got our heads together or our nose together or anything like that. So you may hear this verse again. Because it seems too natural for prayer revival. The disciples came together after Jesus rebuked the devil. Now, I just I don't like to call it out like it is. Sometimes I like to say, well, you know, they have a problem. Well, this person, he says, he rebuked the devil out of a lunatic. The child was obviously in need. In Matthew 17, verse 15, it says, The father came and said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic. Sore vexed, for all times he falleth into the fire and off into the water. So there was a definite need, and you have a father who's at the point he doesn't know what else to do, and he says, God, I need help here. My son's in trouble. He's fallen in fire, fallen in water. And he says in verse 16, I brought him, this is what I want us to make note of, I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. I brought him to them, and I, I thought I, I could see if they could, and they could not cure him. So he brings them to the Lord at this moment. And, and as I looked at this verse, verse 18, Jesus rebuked the devil. He departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. And everybody thought that was wonderful. But then the disciples go to the Lord after all this is over. And the disciples have a question for the Lord that I believe. I, for the Ron Kidder and I talk a lot, but it's not. This is not something I believe is question. But I'm just speaking as a heart of a pastor, knowing the other heart of a pastor. That so often we ask the Lord, Lord, why is not this happening? So here you have disciples saying, Lord, why could not we cast him out? Right. He brought him to us. We were trying to save the trouble. Why couldn't we do it? And I believe that this question alone is what causes Daniel past. I believe this question of why can't we is why we have prayer revivals. The Lord says unto them, because you're unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, remove hence to yonder place. It shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible to you. And then he says, how be it? Everybody say, how be it? How be it? This kind come, goeth not but by prayer and fasting. Some people look at that and are overwhelmed because they haven't prayed. And they haven't fasted. Some people look at that verse and feel an overwhelming moment because they're thinking, Lord, I know what I need, but I haven't done either one of those. But I'm standing before people today yes. that I know have fasted. I know that. Anybody, not, you're not supposed to acknowledge it, but would you just agree in your own heart that I know what I've done these last several days. I know I've fasted. I know there has been prayer, and I know there is being prayer at this moment. There is prayer being made at this moment right now. So what we have to simply do today is simply believe that God is able to do what we need Him to do. The Bible says mountains can be moved if we just believe with prayer and fasting. The answer to their question was not that you can't do this. And that's what I want us to know today. It's not that when they said, Lord, why couldn't we? He didn't say, well, that's just because you can't and I can. But He said you can't because. There's a reason why you can't. And the reason is... It comes by prayer and fasting. When I look around this sanctuary today, this is my perspective when I walked in. I saw a church that is primed for revival. And that's not me trying to just tickle the ears. 
I walked into a sanctuary that has pews ready for people to come sit in these pews. Yes. I hear music that it feels good in this place. And what I sense in this place and about in this place about this church is you. I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about you. You can move mountains. Amen? Amen. You can win this city. And nothing is impossible under you if you do it through prayer and fasting. I think we ought to just clap our hands just for a moment. When somebody that's not here right now that that would, would have been good if they were able to be here, and I know that's just the way it is, it's, you can't help those things. When they come in, next time they come to service, and they start wondering when's it going to happen, you just tell them, you're able to do it. Have you prayed? Have you fasted? Right. It's, it's, it's able, it's possible. That one of the key essentials to this mountain moving question that we are having has already been done. You have fasted. And I know you're praying. So if that's, if that's happened, let's start believing. Amen. Let's start seeing the hand of the Lord move. My purpose tonight, and I'm not going to be long, but my purpose tonight is the subject of praying for our community. And what I felt as I, as I was praying, and actually it hit me yesterday morning, I was praying for God. I, I, I didn't go in praying for this service, but as, as I was praying, the Lord laid this service on my heart. And I had to leave the prayer room and go out to the office and again put down what I felt the Lord was get, giving to me. But here's the first thing that I felt the Lord laid on my heart to pray for this church. And that simply is favor. Yes. Yes. You say that with me, favor. 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 Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost was just poured out. And in my mind, my Pentecostal upbringing set in the front row when I was two years old. Mindset is that all we need is the Holy Ghost. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. That's what the Bible says. So I have the Holy Ghost. I went to BB 11 years ago full of the Holy Ghost, full of sincerity, full of faith, knowing God is going to do what he said he would do. And I believe God can do that. But the Bible says concerning the first church in Acts, Acts chapter 2, after the Holy Ghost was poured out in a mighty way. We understand unity was important. We have to have that. We understand what the Lord did, but it says they continued daily in verse 46 with one accord in the temple and, and breaking bread from house to house. They did, they did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. But verse 47 says something that hit me as I was filling this for this service. It says they were praising God and having favor with all the people. Oh, Jesus. They left the outpouring and they went to house to house. They were breaking bread and they were praising God. But there was a very important key that if we're not careful, we'll miss that was also happening. They had favor with all the people. Mm -hmm. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. They didn't have to go out and try to make it happen. The Lord gave them favor that wherever they went, people noticed and people knew what was happening. And, and God began to pour out not only the Holy Ghost upon them, but favor upon them. Right. About the fourth year of BB, when I was there, and we weren't seeing anything at all happen. And I felt like I was hitting a wall of prevention. Everything that I was hoping would happen hadn't happened yet. And I heard things like this. If you just had kids going to that church, we'd, we'd like to come there. People move in our area, and, and they were checking our church out, and they said, if you just had children, we, we'd like to bring our children. We don't have any children. Somebody else told us one time, they said, if you just, this person was about, about 60 years old, they said, if you just had anybody my age, then I would have, I'd like to come. But, you know, and so they'd, they'd pass by us, but they'd move in, they'd go somewhere else down the road. We, we were watching all these other churches. It seemed like, the, the light was shining on them, but for some reason, it was like there was a wall of prevention. I finally told somebody, the lady that said about her age, I said, well, if you'd start coming here, we, we would have somebody your age. <laughs> Made sense to me. Right. Amen. But immediately, change took place. Whenever I got in my car, not knowing what was going to happen, I drove up to Jonesboro for a, for a youth rally. And in that service, an evangelist for the Greg Alfred was in the church. And I'm, just, I'm there participating in the service for their kidder. He was sitting, I was sitting about where you're sitting. 
And at the end of the service, Brother Aldrin comes back to me, and he prayed over me, not knowing anything I was going through or anything that was happening. And here's exactly what he said. He said, God, I pray that you would allow this church that he pastors to have favor over a hundred mile radius. I thought that sounds impressive. But I didn't realize when I went home that favor had been implanted to our church. It never occurred to me as I went back home that immediately change was going to happen. And suddenly what seemed like a wall of prevention, it felt like the wall had come down. And suddenly people started taking notice that we were there. People that moved in weren't looking for somewhere else to go besides our church because of what we didn't have. But suddenly it started happening. And I believe what changed was simply favor. Amen. That's awesome. Never, never occur, occurred in my mind before that we didn't have favor. We had a building. You have a building. We had the Holy Ghost. Y'all have the Holy Ghost. We had sincerity. I believe sincerity is in this place. But I believe whenever I realized that the church added, that the Lord added to the church daily because favor was given to the church. What I want to do right now, and I want to pray this just for a moment. I, I wish we'd stand together just for a moment. I'll just let you be seated in just a minute. But I'm going to ask us together just for a moment. We're going to pray for God to let favor come up on this church. Probably something you've never really even thought of or prayed for. I know we've asked for God to bless it. But God, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you would allow your favor to come over this church. God, in Jesus' name, Lord, upon this building. God, as people drive by this building, it would be brighter than those buildings around us, Lord. It would be brighter than Home Depot and Lowe's and all the things surrounding. And as they drive by, they would take notice to this church, God. Lord, that people will be compelled to come. I pray to pray favor upon the kidders, the kidder, upon these people, Jesus, as they go, that more people will be drawn to what they have. In Jesus' name, Lord, let it happen, God. The surrounding radius of this church, God, let favor come. We ask you, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to let it happen, Jesus, Lord. Let your favor be blessed, Lord. Let your favor be upon the God. Come on, he said, if you ask him, I'll do it. He said, if I, if you just trust, it'll happen. I, I believe it, Lord, right now. God, let it be done in Jesus' name. Let it be done in Jesus' name. Let it be done in Jesus' name, God. By your word. Before we go on, if, if we can all gather around, I'm going to ask on this part. We're going to pray for this kidder. We're going to ask God to place favor upon their lives. Amen? It seems like other places it happens easy. I don't know why that is. It is it's not because they have something that we don't have. It's just simply sometimes it is easy because God has just poured out blessing. Will we just gather around for just a moment? We're just going to pray favor. We're just going to pray favor upon this couple up on your pastor. Lord, I pray right now in Jesus' name, God, that you place your hand of favor upon Mr. Kidder right now. In Jesus' name, God. Lord, it's simple, Jesus. It's your hand. God, it's not by your mind. It's by your mind, God. It's by your power. Let it happen, I pray right now, God. In Jesus' name. God, let him be alive, God. Let him be alive, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God, I'm going to shout to you. I'm to you. I'm going to shout to you. Glory to God. We clap our hands and just believe that's going to happen right now. Thank God for it. I believe it, Lord. I believe it, God. Let it happen through your name, I pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You can be seated for a moment. When my wife and I got prayed for healing, that we were believing for a healing, and we went and drove six hours away to get prayed for, and we, we didn't know what was going to happen. The prayer was simply that simple right there. It was just a simple prayer that, that, that Brother uh, Cornwell prayed over us. My wife after church said, I believe it happened. But she said, I just didn't feel anything. I said, you don't have to feel anything. It's done. Amen? Amen. We're going to believe favor is going to happen in this church right now. Yes. When I walked in, Brother Kidder, was, when you built this church, was Home Depot right there? Was Home Depot there when, when you built the church? I'm having a hard time. Okay. Was Home Depot right there when you built this building? Uh, right at the last of it, I guess. At the last. Was Lowe's right there when you built the building? 
Was you think Lowe's was there? No. No, Lowe's come after. Well, he chose the most prime property in this area to have a church. And there's no reason for people to drive by this building and not know it's here. Let's just believe it's going to be the light that's shining bright. Amen? Praise God. The second thing I felt, the second thing I felt, and I hope I'm not taking too long tonight. The second thing I felt is God laid my heart as I was praying. One was favor. It just came, it, it just kind of poured out as I was. And it's not anything deep, but the second thing is compassion. Would you say that with me, compassion? compassion. In order to win this city, we must love people. We, have, we must have compassion towards their needs. This last year, Ebola outbreak took place. And somebody thought that it, that it happened in Clinton Hospital. And that's about an hour away from us. We had people stay home from church that night just in case somebody might have driven close to Clinton that they were afraid that they might bring it into the church they would get it. So we, we've had to deal with a few mindsets in our, in our church. We have great people that are scared to death of sickness so much so if they hear of it, they stay home. Well, here's the problem. There's a natural instinct to withdraw from sickness. And there's no greater sickness than sin. And or sinful people. So it's our instinct naturally to protect ourselves from the afflicted. And you start looking at the process. In Matthew 9 and 11. I think, did I give you that verse? Matthew 9 and 11. The Pharisees saw it, which was Jesus, and they said unto his disciples, Why eateth your master with the publicans and sinners? But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. And in order to help this community, I believe we must have compassion. I have no prejudice among us, nothing in us that could be anything that would have anything but love towards those around us. I had, I had one of my good friends does not go to a, does not go to our church, does not go to a church like ours, but he's just a good friend of mine. He asked me one day sincerely, he said, what, what do I need to do? He said, our bus kids are coming in and they don't come from the kind of homes that we come from. And he said, I'm just bothered because I don't know if I need to have my children around those children. I know what he's trying to say, but as I was hearing what he was saying, it honestly was disturbing me because I'm thinking those children need to be around our children. Right. And if we're not going to get their children around our children, then how are they going to get better? They're sick. We're, we're the ones that are whole. We're the ones that know truth. We're the ones that understand what is needed. So we can't be afraid of the afflicted. We have to reach out with compassion to the afflicted. Yes, Jesus. This is not a prayer for, for the community at this moment, though it is, but the prayer I'm about to ask your pastor's wife in just a moment to come, this is a prayer for us. I, I want to pray for this church and ask her to pray for God to place a heart of compassion not only upon the people that are in this church, but anybody that comes into this church. When they walk through these doors, then immediately their heart is united with the heart of this church that God would allow us to have compassion for the afflicted of our city. Amen? Amen. Such a kidder, if you don't mind coming, let's just believe God can touch us. Praise, oh, praise, 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 praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Everybody pray with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for placing, for planting this church in North Little Rock, Lord. We believe in your sovereignty, God. Oh, Jesus, we, we've seen your work. We know that you can heal, God. Thank you for your sovereign plan, Jesus. Lord, help us, help our hearts, God. Just melt the people, God. Send us. Let our feet go where people are, God. Let our eyes go. Hallelujah. Let our eyes see people the way that you see them, Jesus. Lord, you knitted every single person. You knitted them together, Lord. Your word says so, God. Your word says that, and so every single person on this earth, God, every single person in North Little Rock, Lord, oh, Jesus is loved by you. You would have died for every single one. Jesus, give us your eyes to see people, young and old, black and white, yellow, red, Jesus, 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 wealthy, Jesus, help our hearts and help our lives, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
Let's just clap our hands and believe it's done in my name in Jesus' name. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. The last thing I want to pray for tonight is assistance. Would you say with me, assistance? I believe that this thing, this right here is a key and very, very much important because it's, it's incapable as I feel of reaching our city. I, I feel for this church because here y'all are in North Little Rock looking at an overwhelming task and our best attempt and your best attempt is still going to fall short. We must have God to assist us. Amen? And there's, there's a moment in Scripture as you look at Two people standing in a situation surrounded. The Bible lets us know that one's afraid and the other one's not afraid at all. And there's a reason why Elisha's not afraid. And, and it's very simple because he knew something the other one didn't know. Right. He's standing there and he's surrounded by an enemy. The other one's trembling and terrified. And Elisha knows something the other one doesn't know. So he simply prays in 2 Kings 6. He says, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. That he may see. The Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Here's the thing this evening. It was always there. Right. They didn't see it, but it was always there. I, I heard a pastor one time that was praying for God to reveal angels to him. He said, I, I just always wanted to see an angel. I don't think that's necessarily the best prayer to pray. I want to see God. If he lets me see an angel, that's great. But for whatever reason, this pastor was praying for God to let him see angels. And it was a several, several, several year prayer. God, let me see angels. And he said, all of a sudden, one Sunday morning, I, I, as I was leading service, I looked back and he said, back at the back door, suddenly I saw angels walking in the sanctuary. One after one began to walk in the sanctuary. And he said, they sat down in every empty seat where an empty seat was. And every, all across the building, when those empty seats were full, he said they lined the aisles of the, of the sanctuary. He said, God showed me what is always there, but I had never seen it. And as I walked, as I walked in here tonight, Brother Kidder, I, I looked around this sanctuary, and I, again, it, it may feel, it's not even good to talk about, it may feel like some others could have been here to fill the empty spaces, but the reality today, if what he saw is the way it is, the reality is the empty spaces are filled. Right. God has placed able beings or able assistants to help us. As God fills those seats with people, then those people are able to help. But until we have that, we do have the assistance that we need. Right. Brother Barnhill, and I'm going to hurry. Brother Barnhill, pastor of a small church, nothing's happening, nothing was going on, began to pray for God to give him a word. He said, I've, I've heard of others. They never received words from God, but he said, I, I just never heard anything. So he went to a meeting one evening. He said, Lord, just let somebody speak to me. Let somebody tell me if I'm the man for this city or not. So during the service, God placed on the preacher's heart and something to say to, to this pastor. And as he was in that service, he said, I, the, the, the preacher asked all the pastors to come to the front. He said, I, I walked up there with all of it, but the, the, the man came right to where I was. He said, Brother Barnhill, do you believe what God's about to tell you? He said, yes, sir, I do. He said, God told me that you're the man. Exactly what he prayed for. In that year, Brother Barnhill began to pray. Instead of just not worrying about what wasn't happening, he said, God, if I'm the man, I'm going to begin to believe and begin, begin to pray. They did a 24-hour prayer chain from Saturday to Sunday, breaking their 10 a.m. church with prayer. So as they prayed, that last Saturday night was the last moment of the 24-hour prayer chain. He said, as I was in that moment, we began to pray. He said, God spoke to my heart very directly and said, he said, I, simply three words. He said, angels never die. Amen. Say that with me. Angels never die. Angels never die. And he said, the angel that I sent, Cornelius, is still alive. Now, I pray this in our church, and I'm excited about it because I know what it's done for us. But that's what God told him. He said, angels never die. And then he said, the angel that I sent, Cornelius, is still alive. And the Lord told him, if you'll just ask me, I will send that angel to someone that you have never met to bring them to your church. Oh, the angel of Cornelius is simply the angel that went to the Gentile and, and a man that was praying before God that 
He didn't believe God could even hear his prayers. But God sent an angel to him. But God also sent an angel to the man of God. And God brought them together. But it wasn't because the man went and knocked on his door. It was the working of the angel. Amen? Amen. So they prayed. The angel of Cornelius. They began to allow that angel to go out and assist them. And he said the very next morning. That was Sunday, Saturday night. The very next morning for service. Before this, nothing had happened. All it was is he received a word. They went into a 24-hour week prayer. S Saturday night, they prayed to the angel Cornelius. That next morning, he said, seven families that we have never met walked into our church for the first time. Amen? Amen. And this is the word of the Lord that spoke to him. He simply said, if you'll ask that, if you'll ask me, he said, I will release angels to assist you. What I believe in this service that as I look around and I drove in this city, I turned left across McCain and I came over here and I came right beside, right beside Home Depot or right beside Lowe's and I see all these cars going by. The, the reality is the task is too much for this church to do by yourselves. But it's not if we allow the heavenly host to assist us. What I want to pray just for a moment, I'm going to ask your pastor to come in just a second, but I want to pray for God to send his heavenly host. The Bible says in Hebrews 1 and 14. He says are they not all ministering spirits sent forth. To minister to minister for them. Who shall be heirs of salvation. He's, he's talking about angels in the scripture. But just before that. He's referring to angels. He says are they not all ministering spirits. Sent forth to minister for them. Who shall be heirs of salvation. I don't know where they are. If they're in here or not. But everyone that's here if they are. Are sent as ministry spirit, spirits to minister for us. Right. To assist us. Amen? As we pray for protection over our families, we pray for protection for this church, I believe God can put a hedge around us. I believe God can walk into homes and send His angels into homes that can go to doors that we can never go to. And I believe the angel Cornelius can go out and find those people that are hungry to come to this church and be led here. I want to ask your pastor right now just to come and pray as we close this out. Let's pray for assistance. We need the Lord to help us, don't we? Yeah. Let's believe it in Jesus' name. Praise God. Let's stand together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Christ, if I'm not mistaken, Cornelius was praying and Peter was on the roof praying when the angel came. Exactly right. I don't know if you stand with me. I don't know how you take that today, but I take it like there's people out there that need truth. Yes. They're praying. I invited my neighbors across the street to come tonight. Um, and she she couldn't come because she was on her way to a ladies Bible study of a non-denominational church. And he was on his way to a men's gathering. They are praying people. Yes. Yes. So Lord, while they're there praying, and I'm here praying, yeah. would you begin to do we're asking tonight. Yes, would you hallelujah. give the assistance? Would you Lord make God. that mediation between two people praying Jesus. and bring them into truth? Would you pray with me right now that God would not just uh, not just put angels here, but as, yes. as Pastor Rich was saying, that he would allow them to minister and help yes. us to go forth yes. and proceed our steps? Lord God. Sister McQuaid, when I go to Kroger, I want an angel to be there before me, yeah. creating that favor, yes. creating that compassion, yes. so that when the two of us come together, everything's in place. Would you pray with me for that right now? Lord, I thank you tonight for what you've done in this place, God. God, I thank you because we are not alone. We're not trying to build a kingdom for ourselves, but we're building a kingdom for you today, God. Lord, you have sent your angels to work, God, with us and alongside us. You have sent your spirit, God, to go before us. And Lord, we are calling upon you tonight, God. We have sacrificed. We, God, have laid ourselves down and we've laid our pride down and we've laid our own desires down before you to align ourselves with your word, God. Would you put us God, in place with your spirits, would you let the assistance of your presence of your angels work, God, in our lives and in our church and in our city and in our community, in our neighborhoods, God, let the angels that go round about us, let them move out among our neighborhoods, God, giving us favor, God, and giving compassion upon people today, I pray. 
In the name of Jesus, would you let the angel of Cornelius today, God, whatever his name or her name is today, God, would you let that angel go out, Lord, and begin to draw those people, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let SLA be a light, God, to this city. Set us up on a spiritual hill, God, that all people can look and see today. In the name of Jesus, God, we call on you today for our city. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, praise God. Someone said amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Praise God. I'm excited about what God is going to do. Here's, here's the reality, folks. Everybody look at me and listen to me. And I don't mean this at anybody indirectly. But if you walk out of that door yes. and you think this was just another habitual prayer night, yes. then everything you've done was wasted. That's right. But if you walk out of that door and say, God, I've done your word yes. and I believe that you're faithful, right. then it's going to happen. Is it going to be 10 families? I don't know. Is it going to be 20 families? I don't know. But I know that if we've got that faith, Amen. then it's going to happen. Amen. I believe that today. I believe that today. In fact, I think it's all right just before we leave. Why don't we just thank God in advance for what's about to happen over the next two weeks, two months, two years. God, I thank you for what you're going to do, Lord. I thank you that you haven't left us, God. You haven't left us alone. We're not on our own today, God. But you are going to do great things. And we are going to be the people that you do great things through today, Lord. And I thank you for it. I thank you for every healing, God. I thank you for every miracle that's going to happen in this place today, God, and in, over the next two weeks. I thank you for every person that's going to get buried in your name. I thank you for every adult and every child that's going to speak in tongues in these altars, God. I thank you for it today. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, Brother Sanford will be here. He'll be talking about... Uh, personal prayer, inward prayer, our need for daily prayer and what that does to us, uh, the power that it gives us, the ability that it gives us, and um, you don't want to miss that. Uh, he is uh, a praying man, and I am so happy to uh, have him. He loves this church. He's passionate about this church, and uh, I specifically asked, well, in fact, I specifically asked everybody to do certain parts. So, uh, please be here tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, and uh, come ready to pray. And we're going to do some praying. Amen. 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 Uh, tomorrow night, and then obviously Friday night, uh, Sister Charlotte Kidder will be with us talking about praying for our church, unity in our church, uh, different things. And then Saturday night, uh, in fact, I know for a fact we already have at least two people that need miracles that don't go to this church, they don't go to a Pentecostal church, that are going to be here Saturday night. Yes. Expecting God yes. to do a miracle in their life. And they're counting on you to come with that kind of faith, expecting that God's going to do a miracle. So, uh, amen. God bless you. Hold on to that fast. We've got four more days. <laughs> and it's going to be good. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow.